Okay, hello, this is a screencast on JavaScript and PC frameworks. Um, I'm going to be covering uh, two main topics. Um, so it's the Agility JS MVC framework and then applying a robot legs approach to JS. Robot legs being the MVC architecture that I prefer from uh, ActionScript uh, development. Okay, so Agility JS, um, their tagline is ship more, code and maintain less which definitely sounds good to me. Um, it's a very lightweight framework, um, but one of the things that I really liked about it was that it's very easy to get going. There's not much boilerplate code, but it does give you some very nice language features. Um, those features are, you get a choice of a verbose or compact syntax. Um, you get a nice event model, nice binding, really simple, um, and the use of external HTML templates, which I think is pretty essential because um, just embedding HTML and strings in JavaScript is really not the future. Um, but let's, let me show you some code. Okay, so this is um, IntelliJ, which is where I do most, where I'm going to be doing my JavaScript development. Um, my project um, is set up in a similar way to how a Flash developer would set a project up. Um, so there's an assets folder where your CSS and um, images will go. Um, this is you've got a JS folder for containing your JS libraries and the JS libs. So you've got the agility and the jQuery library. Both of them are required. Um, and then also a com folder down here, which is where all of the various individual classes um, that make up um, my application. That's where they live. So that's broken down into um, packages um, and then individual classes. So just a very simple example. There's the number utils class, um, which uh, is not being built or, or written using Agility. It's just um, a very simple JavaScript pseudo class thing. Okay, so let's get started with some code. So as you can see, this is my HTML wrapper. It's pretty basic. All I've got uh, in it is um, jQuery and the Agility library. And what I'm going to do is so I'm going to write some Agility. So Talking about those um, different syntaxes that you have. So we've got the verbose object. Um, all agility objects, to get at them, you use a similar accessor as you would with jQuery, but it's $2 rather than just the one for jQuery. Um, so every um, agility object um, consists of three main properties the model, the view, and the controller. Um, so that's the verbose uh, syntax, um, which as you can see is quite nice and clear, shows you what you're doing, but you've also got a compact version. Um, and the way that that works is that that's split into oops, three blocks where again you have your model, have a view and then you have a controller. Um, the way I like to use them is I like to think of the verbose syntax as declaring an actual class um, and use the compact syntax um, for when I'm um, say extending a class um, or just instantiating it. Um, the controller um, gives you access to either um, agility uh, events, um, so there's a few agility events, I'm going to be hooking up the create which is fired upon the object creation. What you can do here, you can just write any old JavaScript, so we created. Um, but you can also listen to destroy um, when stuff's added or removed, um, when properties in your model change, um, and you can also listen to um, any uh, DOM event as well. Um, and I'll show you how to do that a bit later on. Um, so both uh, syntaxes do have a controller. Um, let's see this thing uh, running. Uh, browser one. It's landed behind, that's really handy. Let's move the browser up there. Okay, sorry about that. Let me just refresh the page. So Henry gets created and then Daisy gets created. Okay, 
Okay. One thing that's um, quite nice with Agility um, is obviously it's a bit rubbish um, that we have to hard code that um, Henry property uh, in two different places. So what you can do is create getters and setters. Um, so name. So what I've done there, I've just used the J, uh, IntelliJ uh, um, live template, but you can obviously type this all out yourself. Um, so it's just set name, then you pass in a parameter, then you just use this.model.set and then pass in an object. And then to retrieve something, it's just this.model.get and then the name of the property that you want to retrieve. So, and then we can use it. So. And there we go, so that's uh, wired that up a bit nicer. Um, but obviously, you know, this is uh, JavaScript, so we want to do something visual here. So what we what we have um, in the view object is that you can write um, inline uh, HTML. So um, so you've got the format uh, property, which is the actual HTML, and then you have a style property as well. Oops. Apologies about my typing there. So, um, and it's perfectly valid for each type of syntax. So if I try that in there, notice I'm not putting the style in, I'm just leaving that alone. Um, and then to actually add uh, this to the stage, uh, or the display list, or I suppose you might say the HTML page, um, do it using the jQuery's ready function. And then you jump back to agility to access the document object for agility and you use the append method and then we'll say verbose object. We have another line as well and we'll say compact object. Um, go to my browser, refresh that. Okay, so there you see we've got, so they've been added to the HTML page. Um, you notice this style property, I prefixed it with an ampersand, and that means that that style is local to that particular agility object. This is, um, if you don't put that in, it makes it a global style, um, which you can see turns both um, agility objects red, um, and really you don't want to be doing that, because the idea of the style tag, according to the docs, is to um, try and keep to, to make each agility object transportable between systems, so you're not reliant on um, CSS files in other locations, um, which is quite a nice idea, um, but whether you'd want to put all your CSS in there, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but obviously we probably want to see what this kid's name actually is, um, and that's where binding can come in, so in, sort of injecting stuff from the model into the view, um, and we can do that. And then there's a nice property called data bind. Um, and in there, you can just put name. There you see, Henry gets a period there. So the way that works is that the span tag gets filled with whatever is in the data bind. Um, but if you wanted to, say, make a link, um, the way you do that is you again use this data bind equals then you go href equals name so that's attribute equals and then the value in your model if I wrap that around that span oops and refresh so you can see if you see at the bottom in the status bar just above Firebug, the URL is source for it's actually Henry, so it's taking the name as the ahref as well as obviously the contents of the span that's actually making up 
link there. Um, I mean, as you can see, uh, I've already gone beyond my print margin, um, so it's not really an ideal way of writing um, view elements. Um, but one of the nice things that this language gives, gives us oops, uh, is templating. So you can just tell um, verbose. What we can do is we can take the whole HTML block. The type text equals HTML here tells the browser not to actually render or process this element so it doesn't get displayed on the page. But I can chuck it out like that. And instead of using some nasty HTML in a string. We can use a bit of jQuery. Uh, to access that object. Dot HTML. Okay, let's just make sure that that still works. So it should just look exactly the same. Um, now it's a bit nicer, although that piece of code looks a bit more unfriendly. This is definitely a lot more friendly. Um, so that's a really nice feature of this language, uh, this uh, framework. Um, but another very powerful use is for um, is the inheritance. But if we just want to show you the refactoring as well here. So this is I change up to a kid object. You can see it's updating at the bottom of the screen as well. So that's a nice thing that IntelliJ gives me. So I'm just I've just renamed that to kid object just because um, this is actually a kid. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename the compact object to another kid. And this time I'm going to extend kid objects. And the way you do any sort of uh, inheritance or extending is just the first parameter um, is um, the class that you want to extend. So in this case, kid object, and then I'm extending it. And then what the nice thing is, is that anything that you supply overwrites what's already there, but anything that you don't supply, uh, so for instance, I leave the format alone and I leave controller as is so another kid object extends kid object overrides the name property and everything else is the same so if we run that now see Henry is hello now Daisy is hello you can see Daisy's now got the same uh, layout uh, that Henry has um, but, like I say, with the overriding, you can anything that you supply can override what is already there. So, for instance, I wanted to make another kid object green. So I'm overriding the style, but I'm still leaving everything else as is. So there we go. We've now got a green one and a red one. Let's um, add a bit more complexity to this. Um, so if we want our objects to speak to each other. Uh, for instance, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the property called surname Jackson. Then in here I think I don't need the link anymore. Uh, space, another span and data find to the surname and I'm also going to add a button so what 
what we can do in here. Um, so let's get rid of this uh, create because that's a bit annoying. Don't need that anymore. But instead, what we're going to listen to is a click uh, on button edit. This is when they're clicking the um, edit surname button. So we'll say edit surname. Ooh, I need to add a getter and setter for the surnames. Always forget to do that. Set surname. That populates the prompt box with a value. Oops. As in, they didn't press cancel. And I can say this set surname input. I can run that. So and yet there you see that surname is always changing. Now, um, now I chose the names Henry and Daisy because they're actually my children. So they actually both share the same surname. So in this scenario, if I wanted to update both of them at the same time, one way I could do that, I could go another kit object as well. Set surname. Input and then obviously because this might well refer to the another kid object, I have to use kid object there. Reload that. Edit surname. Put some S's in. Another bit of update. Now you might have noticed that actually that's a really bad technique to use because um, it means that kid object and another kid object are now completely dependent on both of them existing all the time so you could never use one without the other so that's um, an example of where you know I've, I've effectively tied those two bits of code in together um, so that is what I would call bad code smell so let's uh, carry on with that so our uh -oh, code smell um, and so this is where I would use uh, robot legs type approach um, and so in robot legs the core concepts really with robot legs um, and with any MVC architecture in ActionScript would be that there is a common event bus. And this is something that I was quite keen to implement in JavaScript. Um, RobotLegs also gives us the commands uh, via the command pattern, services, and models as well. So the common event bus, um, basically what it is, is any main object in your RobotLegs system is called an actor. And that actor can dispatch an event over a common event bus. And everything, any other actor, because they also have access to the common event bus means that they can subscribe to events or listen to events on the common event bus which means that any object can speak to any other object regardless of um, whereabouts they are in a system where they are on a display list if they're even on the display list um, and it's this concept of the common event bus that I was keen to implement in uh, using uh, agility as my base so the way I've done that I include some more scripts. So, com dk common. Uh, you might notice that the way I've got my um, folder structure set up is quite similar to how I would work with um, packages in, uh, in action script. So, again, I'm quite keen to try and keep. Uh, the jump from JavaScript to ActionScript um, as small as possible. So let's have a look at this event bus. Hmm. The event bus doesn't seem to do much at all. That's because it's an agility object, so it still has the ability to um, dispatch events, um, and I'm just being verbose by, by actually declaring it as an object and including it in. But really what I want is the actor. So the actor class, um, what it, the key things it does is that it has a create handler, so whenever it gets created, it calls its on register. The on register is somewhere where you can override and put any listeners that you want 
onto the uh, onto the event bus. And um, you've got two techniques. Uh, so to add a bus listener, there's a method called add bus listener, um, and that just binds an event to the event bus. Then if you want to dispatch an event to any other actor, you use dispatch on bus, and you just pass in the event and the payload. Um, and then that's just uh, fired through the trigger event on the event bus. So it means that any object can talk to any other object in your JavaScript application. So if I make this extend actor, override on register. Okay, so instead of all this, actually, I'm going to declare so events in JavaScript um, are actually strings. They should be unique, so obviously, because especially because it's a shared event bus, you just need to make sure that they are unique. Um, there you go. Oops. This dispatch on bus. And surname edited, and then the payload, um, which in this case is the input that was captured from the prompt. And then on register, yeah, add bus listener, surname edited, listener. the event and then the payload um, so in this case I'm just going to call it value and then we'll just do this set same value so um, there's so an event has been declared as just a plain string um, the controller has been set up to listen for a click event on the edit button which was declared up at the top here um, when you click the edit button um, and the input is not null, it dispatches um, the surname edited event on the uh, common event bus um, and then that is picked up by the bus listener on surname edited which is also declared in uh, this uh, kid object and then you've got the on surname edited which will set the surname um, and you can see another kid object hasn't changed because that just inherits from kid object but now you can see the kid object needs not to have any knowledge whatsoever about the another kid object um, but hopefully this all now works so if we edit the surname hit yeses, and there you can see both of them change um, in sync but without that horrible nasty coupled up code okay so what about command patterns and command queues? So another uh, concept that I'd like to discuss um, that I've implemented using um, agility as a base is the idea of command queues. So I'm just going to import some more stuff that I need. Uh, Trace utils just gives me similar features such as being able to trace um, out like I would on Flash. And because um, what I'm going to do here is actually going to really, this is not going to be any UI to it, it's just a thing that's going to trace stuff out into the, um, into the JavaScript console. Okay, so we have, um, so let's see, there's Trace util just does JavaScript console. Um, command event is just another way of having those strings. Um, I like to add the class name in front of the string and try and hopefully keep them unique. I've got um, an abstract command and an abstract command queue, and I'll show you how those work. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a delay command. So, this is going to be a very simple command that just has a timer. Actually, rather than writing it out, I'm going to use set up another live uh, snippet there. So, done a command extends abstract command. 
So in here, I'm going to give it a name. Commands have names just to identify them. Delay command. And it's going to have a duration property of 1000. Um, okay. And to override the execute method. And in here, let's say trace starting. Okay. So it's just going to say that the command is triggering off. And then I'm going to just use a very simple JavaScript timeout. And on, I'm going to invoke on success. And because it's a callback, I don't pass parentheses or brackets. And then, oops. I need to get that duration. So. There we go. So uh, if I run that now. Invoke it, apologies. I do need that jQuery object pack. Um, and then um, I need to. Um, that was Daisy. <laughs> She's back from nursery. Okay, so. I'm going to actually invoke my delay command, so we just call the execute method. So a command is a throwaway piece of um, code um, just used to do one simple task. So in this case, you can see it starts and then it stops. Um, the get name isn't very uh, useful at the moment because I'm going to have more than one of these commands. I'm just going to update that, so override that with uh, a bit more information. Okay. And so say, for instance, if we wanted more than one delay command. So I'm, I'm overriding the delay command and give it a duration of, say, Two seconds. So I'm now executing two delay commands, um, one after the other. Um, you might expect that to take three seconds, but actually both trigger at the same time. So it's. Ooh, I now oh, that's why. Brackets there. Let's start that again. So you can see, at least now we can see which one's starting at what time, but trust me, that didn't take three seconds. <laughs> um, actually, I'll demonstrate that. So if I put in lots, you know, if this was going to execute um, in a big queue, it would take forever. But as you can see, it just finishes all within a couple of seconds. Reload that again. So there you go. So if we want to queue up our delays. Um, the way you do that is you use a command queue. So I'm going to write a and class delay command queue extends abstract command queue. Now the abstract command queue gives me a populate queue method. And in that, I can call add command. And all of that accepts is a command in there. So if I put in, actually, we'll stick with it two seconds and see what's going on. So I check in a load. 
and we'll just execute a queue. So the delay command uh, queue is actually, it just works in the same way as a normal command in that it, it completes eventually, but the delay command queue um, has obviously a, a collection of uh, delay uh, commands within it that it executes as it goes. Right, so if I reload that, so we start one delay, wait a couple of seconds, start another delay, wait a couple of seconds, and as you can see, each uh, delay command is being executed one after the other. And eventually, if we just keep waiting, so there we go, and then finally the, the whole queue has uh, completed. And there you can see, if I'd have named my delay command queue, it would have said on success delay command queue rather than just abstract command queue, which is base class. So um, I just want to quickly talk about uh, the packages and classes that I'm using. Um, as you can see, um, I can separate out each JS into its own little uh, file. So this is the say the abstract command queue um, in a file called abstract command queue.js. Um, and what it's um, doing, and then just use an import for each um, class file. Uh, so in that way, rather than writing, when I'm coding, having to code in a JavaScript, uh, single JavaScript file, which has thousands of lines in it and say 10 or 20 classes in it, which would be very difficult to move around and navigate through. Um, you know, I can just treat it like I would with um, action script classes, which is a nice way of working. Okay, so what's next? Um, I'm, next I'm going to be looking into um, using, um, I've actually seen someone has written an Ant script to combine and compress um, JS and CSS files, um, so in the same way that you get a min file from jQuery. Um, I'm hoping to do basically the same sort of thing, um, where I can go through the source folder of the project, um, and um, minimize and compress uh, all the JavaScript and then eventually all the CSS as well, um, but treating CSS in a very similar way. Um, and then another area that I'd probably be interested in looking into is um, unit testing with JavaScript. Um, so I know that there's a framework out there called uh, QUnit, um, which I think does the job, and um, I'd like to see if um, TDD um, is possible with, uh, with this uh, type of approach. Uh, and that is it. So thanks for listening.